and welcome to 23 degrees sideways. We're going to talk a little bit today. Let me uh, move one of the firearms out of the way here. So the election is really soon. This is going to be a topical. But I like to think of these, I, I like to discuss things that have a little bit more lasting importance. And one of the things that is very difficult right now, the way the news media and the drama is going on with the news cycle right now is that if you're an hour in production or upload time, you're late, like seriously late. And you know, I'm running three, four days. I can't, I don't know when I'm going to get to town to upload because, you know, I'm in a situation where I have a internet provider, rural telco, and they are monopoly and they will not let go of their monopoly. And... I get 60k up on a good day with 3% error. So I don't do much uploading from home. Anyway, um, Nancy frickin' Pelosi. <sighs> Antifa, BLM, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump. So it's a couple days till the, till the election. A couple weeks right now, but um, I... I I sent a post to a couple of friends. I've mentioned one of these friends that we've talked about before. He likes to quote Atlantic articles. And then he kind of walks it back a little bit sometimes, you know. But not all the time. Like, he just recently came out with a full defense of we, need, we needed 100% complete unemployment UBI for everybody the moment COVID started so that no one could have to work because... Um, Suicide death rates are leading cause of death for a certain age group, and therefore coronavirus something. It, it, bad math, okay? The guy was just using bad math. Um, I tried to point it out gently without saying, Dude, you just took the lowest <coughs> death rate cohort in our entire population and looked at the increase in deaths this year and blamed it all on the secret deadliness of coronavirus, and it's almost all suicide. But, hey, whatever. So this is one of the, this is the guy who claims that Donald Trump is an existential threat to the republic. Donald Trump is a threat to the very idea of our nation, to the capability of having a nation. Four more years of Trump and America. So, Donald Trump isn't that important, okay? Donald Trump is a president, and presidents have a certain amount of power, and, you know, in a lot of ways, Donald Trump has been fantastic, because sooner or later, we probably will get another Democrat president, and we'll have mountains of um, court decisions, law, restricting the executive branch, and that's going to be absolutely fantastic, provided we don't end up with a legislature that is all Democrat that decides that all of the judges that um, disagree with execu unitary executive authority have to be impeached, because they're talking about that. I mean, they're seriously talking about taking the Senate so they can impeach the judges to change the judiciary. But they're not a threat to the Republic. Donald Trump is. So, a black free speech advocate involved in a San Francisco rally to oppose billionaire censorship of speech through monopoly cartels gets his teeth knocked out, literally, by Antifa. Then he gets banned by Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so that he's not allowed to talk about it. To the cheering in support of... Democrats. Democrats, the progressive left, and notably the mainstream billionaire corporate media, all lockstep support Gretchen Whitmer. You know, the lady who killed people by restricting ongoing, canceling ongoing and chronic medical care at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. She canceled people's ongoing medical care. They died. The one who said no gardens because of virus, you're not allowed to have a garden because there's a virus. 
the one who claimed that people protesting her in their cars with the windows rolled up were spreading the plague and killing people, the one who claims the legislature and the courts cannot block her emergency powers. Democrats, the progressive left, and the mainstream corporate media support her in unanimous lockstep. But that's not a threat to the republic. Frickin' canary in the coal mine. Nancy fucking Pelosi, who has generated a quarter of a billion dollar real estate vineyard business empire directly through political office. Oh, and whose vineyard is a union-busting operation. Nancy Pelosi, who is acknowledged by members of her own caucus as being unhinged and willing to hurt America in her desperate attempts to get rid of Trump. Nancy Pelosi, who has tried to hold this Senate hostage to her whims. She's not, she's not a senator. You get that right. Nancy Pelosi, according to P&M, a couple of friends, does not pose a threat to the republic. Joe Biden who appears to be made, mired in a major fucking Chinese pay-for-influence scandal, which, as I record this, I wrote this a couple days ago, but as I re record this, apparently is actually at the state of open bribery, right? Democrats, corporate billionaire media, and social media empires are all deliberately defending by banning people who oppose him Joe Biden's not an existential threat to the Republic. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who between them are responsible for something like, I, you know, I did some research, but the numbers are really hard, but something like 60% of the minority population of the prisons in the United States. Those two people, direct responsibility, they're not a threat to the Republic. Donald Trump who has utterly failed to introduce concentration camps. Hey, thanks, Obama. Destroy health care. Oh, hey, thanks, Pelosi. Ban LGBTQ what-the-fuck barbecue stuff from the world. Well, actually, Obama was doing that early in his first term. But, hey, we won't talk about that. Um... Actually, Trump has hammered on Muslim countries for not being equitable to gays. Totally and completely, Donald Trump, who's totally, completely, and failed to make Middle East peace impossible. Actually, quite the opposite. He's done more for Middle East peace than anyone since, I don't know, the last Sultan of the Ottoman Empire or whatever. Right? Presided over the greatest increase in economic wealth and stability for minorities in the history of the entire country, despite the efforts of the Democrats, some of whom are on record openly opposing economic gains for minorities because it helps Trump. Donald Trump is a threat to the Republic. Donald Trump, who refused to bow down to little Mao fucking rocket man North Korean dictator, and refused to bow down to Madame Führer of the Fourth Reich, and if you don't like that characterization, then screw you. I'm not backing down from that. Um, told slacker countries to pay up or shut up. Donald Trump, who told crooked backroom foreign policy dealers that they had to obey orders instead of accepting bribes. No, Donald Trump is an existential threat to the Republic. I've listened to Biden for decades, okay? The guy's been in politics since I was three years old. I've listened to him for decades, partly because I've always been liberty-minded and a gun owner and, you know, um, that whole farming freedom thing. I've listened to Biden for decades. I've listened to Pelosi for decades. I've advocated for prison reform in California under the tender ministrations of fucking Harris. I've listened to Progressive since I was an infant. I have a collection of books from my grandfather that I inherited when he died. He was a racialist progressive. And the progressives quote the same stuff. None of that has changed, all right? Um, now, I know progressive thought. 
And now it hasn't changed. I've listened to the utter dipshits with their never-proven aseptic theory of medicine try to overturn 80 years of medical research on masks with eight months of paid, vested interest, half-cocked bullshit pseudoscience. But Donald Trump is an existential threat to the United States. The worst economic problems that we have with coronavirus are democratic states. And it's Donald Trump's fault because he's an existential threat. Well, I'll be voting in a few days. I tried to give my friends a chance to change my mind. They haven't, um, you know, they haven't done anything. Nothing. They haven't even been able to respond. I've asked pointed questions. And the closest I've gotten is it's objective reality that he's an asshole. Like, seriously, that was P. That was his argument. It is objective reality that he's an asshole. That's meaningless, all right? All right. You know, I've also listened to decades, four decades, two Democrats who don't even know how elections work argue about every fucking little change being a secret plot by Nazi Republican death squads. And Republican death squads is actually a phrase they use. Okay? Not just me, or not just uh, Democrats around me, but like fucking Elizabeth Moon uses it, right? Okay. So, two years ago, my mother-in-law was raging because a polling place in another state had to be moved half a mile for ADA access, like wheelchair ramp, right? And the election commissioner, who was a Republican, didn't open several new facilities with no legal authority, no staff, no money, because in her opinion, the poor, my, my mother-in-law's opinion, the poor brown people wouldn't be able to make the long trek after work to get to the polling place while it was open for two weeks of voting. Completely complete lack of understanding of how anything works at all. Yeah, well, I'll be voting in a few days. You know, uh, I told them they have the opportunity to change my mind. They can show me why I should be voting Democrat. Why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are not a threat to the Republic. Why Trump is a threat to the... You can't show me, you can't show me that there's a threat from Trump to the Republic. Trump isn't the best candidate ever, okay? He's, he's like a... Um, married with children parody of a business Democrat candidate. He is, okay? And... The thing is that he's not, he's temporary. He's not forever. He doesn't want to legislate morality forever. He doesn't want to, the big thing with the Democrats, he doesn't want to legislate human nature. Yeah, he, he deregulates things for small business, but, you know, small business isn't multinational corporations. The multinational corporations run by and owned by the billionaires who are the primary donors and beneficiaries of the Democratic Party. Think that one through for a minute. Stay sideways and, uh, you know, who you vote for isn't always just about this year. It's about 10 years from now. Have a good one. <laughs>